All right, well, as you can see, there's the axle. I got the wheels off the Bronco. I got the third member out. Look in there, the whole differential's missing right up here. I got, and it, what, it is the original gasket, original copper rings that they use to seal from the factory. I'm learning more and more, everything's all original on this Bronco. Um, but I'm gonna go over putting a set of gears in a uh, four nine inch, somewhat. These are 31 spline axles. If you look at them, I've counted the splines on them. So since I'm waiting on some parts for these two motors I'm building, um, I'm going to go over a few things and, and differences about the four nine inch. Now this isn't a lot, this is just examples I have to show you. So instead of completely going through step by step, because there's a lot of people who've made videos um, on four nine inches, and instead of going step by step and dragging it out and just recreating the wheel that somebody's already done, you can go in and YouTube and put four nine inch, you know, gear gear replacement or whatever. And there's a couple good videos to watch. <clears throat> One of them I would recommend, it's 26 minutes long, but this guy goes through and explains a lot of stuff to you. I'm going to touch on some of the other little details that he hasn't explained, but he tell, he basically shows you how to go through, and he's, he does a pretty good job. Uh, and his name is Austin Colson. He, he basically made his own stand, and, and he goes in depth on, on how to do some things and different ways to do it. So... He's got a shop, looks like, from watching his video, and he knows what he's doing from my experience. Um, you can also go to a, a, you know, one of them that'll come up will be like Jake's Performance, and they explain the difference between crush sleeve and shims, and <clears throat> you'll get confused if you don't know all the terminology. And then there's a rear wheel performance video, it's like six minutes, and they kind of go through some stuff. But I don't have that high dollar aluminum rear end and everything, but they do touch some basics. So I would recommend those three, but if you just want to be like, how do I do this? He does have a couple tools that he's made, uh, nothing real fancy, but Austin Colson. It's how to change gears and add a limited slip to a Ford 9 inch. So new, in the videos, new gears and limited slip install in a Ford 9 inch. So, and there's more out there. These are just first couple I checked on because I don't want to make a whole nother video just because to make another video when there's so much out there already. All right, so <clears throat> without further ado, here we go. All right, so there's different, this is, this piece right here is the yoke, okay? These two pieces right here are the yokes, and these are, they look fairly the same. This is a four nine inch, okay? There's this yoke, if you look at it, this is the one I had sitting in, in the shop, you know? You see the spider webs and shit on it, it's been sitting there a while. Uh, it came out of another four nine inch we're in, and, and okay, so... There's a difference between the four nine inch and the four eight inch, and they look a lot of this lot the same. But when people talk about okay, you can get a socket on a on an eight inch, and you can't on a nine. Basically, your ring gear is smaller, right? So an eight inch, see how this has a a bulge right here, and if I was to try to put a socket on it, I can't because here's one of the nut, and one of the nuts goes right here. One of the studs go right through here. You can't get a socket on it because it's kind of covered by this. Okay, an eight inch doesn't have that. An eight inch is smaller. And you can actually get a socket on an 8-inch. This piece right here is smaller, so you can get a socket on all of them. So if somebody says, oh, it's an 8-inch ring, and you walk over there, and you can take a socket and go like that and get it on that bolt straight on, then that's an 8-inch. That's not a 9-inch. They look a lot alike. You put them next to each other, a little different. If you go look at it straight on, you see how this bolt is kind of covered up, and this bolt's kind of covered up by this? That's a nine inch. So another reason why a lot of people use the four nine inch, and these things aren't light, is because if you look at this, there's a bearing here, and then there's also a bearing here. An 8.8, .8, a Dana, whatever, um, 35, 40, all these other rear diffs. You can look this up on YouTube also or Google it. The Ford 9-inch has a bearing that supports right here. 
when you're putting a lot of massive torque to turn these axles, this thing will actually move here. And let me show you some, some, a reason why. Okay, so this is just a set of summit gears. When you have this gear sitting in there like this and it's turning and you're putting a lot of power to it, this bearing that I just pointed out to you here helps support this because you've got this bearing here and you got a bearing here, right? Well, what happens is when you go to torque this and you're trying to turn this, this will try to flex up and you get movement and it can break stuff. Well, the reason why a Ford 9 inch is, is so tough for its size is it has a bearing here and a bearing here and it helps hold that in there instead of it, you know, most 8 inches or 8.8s or not 8 inch, 8.8 .8 or Dana, whatever don't have this, it's flat right here. GM 10 bolts and 12 bolts, and all you got holding it is this bearing here. And then when you go to torques, it, it's all that, this is trying to move, <clears throat> right? This, this right here will try to work up. It'll try to work itself up. And all that pressure is going against this to where this is a lot stronger, okay? So that's why four nine inches are a really good rear differential really good they'll handle a lot of power this this is the one that's just sitting in the shop you know like i said look at all the spider webs this is the original one that came out of the bronco i want to show you and i'll show you some more terminology um so if i was to replace this yoke and use this differential if you notice you say see how this yoke sticks out farther okay now i've got, and i just bought a drive shaft for it to go with that 6r80 i put in so now I'm going to go from a 355 to a 411 gear. Okay. A lot of people say I should have went to 456s, but that's okay. I'm not, you know, I got a low in the transfer case. Well, that 6 already has a real low first gear. So I think I'll be okay. I kind of want a little bit more of my overdrive. But when I'm cruising 75 and 80 in some places, it doesn't like it to be in 6 gear. So I do want a little bit more gear to it. And it'll help with the takeoff. Yeah. You don't want to go too steep. A lot of people go, say, don't fear the gear. That is true. Don't fear the gear. However, I've got a low first gear in that 6R80 transmission. So I'm going to stick with the 411s. I'm going to try them. Okay, and I'll drive it. It's two-wheel drive. Normally, I'll drive in two-wheel drive. Make sure that's what I want. If not, then I'll go to a 456. I'll just change the ring gear out. Um, so... Getting back to this, if I put a different length yoke on it, so I pulled this out because I didn't want to mess with the original Bronco setup. It's all original. You know, I'm, I'm kind of hard-headed because I say that, but then I turn around and put a different gear in it and I put a different transmission. I kind of want to keep a lot of the stuff original, but that never happens. The same thing happened to my Mustang. Um, but if you look, this yoke is a lot longer and it sticks out farther okay so that is five look about five and a quarter well look at this one four and a quarter i got a whole inch difference from this yoke to that yoke this is the one that came out so i don't want to mix the yolks up well then i'll have to use this yoke right well then i might as well use a whole carrier because i just you know they take the same U-joint basically, okay? However, if I use this differential, I'm pushing my drive shaft an inch back into the transmission. I don't want to do that because if I go over a bump or even if it does fit in, it'll be tight. You want, and my, my rear differential goes up because I go over some hills or I'm out playing with it, it'll shove the, hit the back of the transmission. Now, if I want to put another couple inches of lift on it, then yes, I probably want to put that yoke on it because the drive shaft need to be longer, but instead of making another inch longer, I could put this yoke on it. But you see the difference in the length of the yoke compared to the regular carrier? And that's why this nut doesn't come out. Okay, I bought this setup for Motive Gear and it is supposed to use the 2.89 stock support, open bolt, right, stocker in. Ford 9 inch. So those bearings are 2.89. Well, Ford did make a couple different types. So let's do this. <clears throat> let's check 
the bearings on these. Okay. So I'll just go to because if the bear and these are the bearings we're talking about, the bearings on these, these rings should be the same size as the bearings, right? Because they got to go in there and they got threads. That's a 2.89, and that's a 2.89. So I could still use this carrier. I would just not be able to use that yoke. All right, these are the same size bearings. Okay, so Ford did make two different size, and I thought these were them. <clears throat> I must have I must have been drunk when I measured that earlier. Basically, this is a 300 gear, and this is a 355 gear. I'd like to keep my 355 gear if I could. So you got to be careful. You know, this yoke is the same, but it's not. It's an inch difference, which may be a good thing and it may be a bad thing. Here's the parts we're going to do. And I, I was going to put this on the table, but I don't want to because it's, it's May fall. So I bought the Motive Gear. They're a pretty good company. I think they're made by Richmond. So shims, bolts, gasket maker. You got some Loctite. You got some uh, grease in here with a brush so you can get your pattern. You got your two different types of bearings depending on your rear diff. You got your crush leaves. And then you got your pinion bearings here. And then there's your inner pinion bearing. And then you got your carrier bearings under that. So what we're going to do is go to the 411 gear. This is just the summit gear. Uh, what I want to show you is, I don't know if I can get close enough to this, is if you look at the regular... See how there's no pinion, inner pinion support here for like GM or Chrysler or whatever? There's no support here. And what they'll do is they'll stamp the number on it. And that is how much from the center, that's your pinion depth. Ford doesn't do that on their Ford 9 inch. You got to do it with those shims I showed you. And now, since we're in here, I, I'm going to try this. This is their Speedmaster... Uh, torque worm gear ratio set. I've got a Powertrax Grip Pro in my Jeep and I love it. It's freaking awesome. Basically, this is the same type of design and I like it. My son's uh, vehicle also in the front of his little Wrangler. And I'm going to try this. And this one uses six gears instead of three. You know, the little worm gears in it. Um, but I don't know if it's going to handle the power I'm going to put down on it, but we're going to find out. All right. So that's what we're going to do. And then this, this part number from Summit is a Summit 740903 ring and pinion Ford 9 inch 411 gears. The part number from Speedmaster who 31 spline, I think it's a PCE 204. 1002 but there's the information on it and it's a 31 spline and now i know this ford made a couple different nine inch rear ends let me go over that real quick this hole now that i got them together is smaller than this one this is a 28 spline carrier this is a 31 spline for example this is just a cap off of my AutoZone brake cleaner, right? So, just a cap. Something simple. It won't fit in this hole. See that? It won't fit. I go over to this side, and it slides right in. See it? So, even though they're both Ford 9 inches, when they... 31 splines a bigger axle will handle more power. So be careful. You got to know which rear axles you're going to put in, whether it's a 28 or a 31 spline. Okay? That way you get the right carrier. So this is a 31 spline carrier. Okay? See how that cap goes in? Best thing to do is, is the best thing to do is count the splines. There's two different bearing sizes. It was actually after, when you go to aftermarket cases, they make three and a quarter, 3.25 or whatever bearings. The bearing diameters they make a 2.25. 8.9 and a 3.062 and but these are both the same size there's a crush sleeve in here 
what you don't want to do, it's a, it's a one use thing. You got to go buy another crush leaf. So yes, I would like to keep the Bronco, the original. It's a 355 gear. This is, uh, or a 350 gear. The tag was correct. This is a 300 gear. <clears throat> I would rather use this one. I could use this carrier and then I'd have to take this yoke off and use this yoke against that. So this yoke is an inch longer. Well, then I'd have to take my drive shaft off and shorten it by an inch. And I'm, I just got a, bought a brand new drive shaft from Pim Racing and I'm not gonna do that. So I've got to use this yoke. Once I take this yoke off, I can't reuse that crush sleeve. I could use this carrier and put this yoke on that. They're both, I looked inside, they're both about the same. Neither one of them are Daytona with pinion, which is, has a little bit stronger support. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and go with this carrier. And I'm going to leave the Bronco, the original Bronco with 355 gears intact just as much as I possibly can. Uh, so I'll put this yoke on this one over here, but I'm going to tear this apart. All right, so this is the one we're going to build. So there's my stuff. Here's the Bronco still. I got, like I said, I got the tires off of it. I'm not going to go in depth on how to build it because, like I said, there's plenty of videos out of that. So basically, I'm going to take it all apart. One thing you do want to do is keep these caps. So you want to mark them to make sure they go in the, in the same places, back in the right places. That way you don't get them mixed up, okay? So, here we go. Here's your carrier housing. This is all apart. This pinion support bearing here is, uh, <clears throat> I knocked it out. So that bearing, we're not gonna read, we're gonna got a new one. Here's a little clip that holds it back on the inside. So we've got this. This was like an oil slinger that goes on the back side of that uh pinion gear this is a shim that goes this is the stock shim that goes here so i'm going to clean that <clears throat> you always want to try to keep from damaging that when you get that um because that's a good starting point here's your pinion support and the seal is out of it okay the two races are out of it and there's the two bearings that are on the pinion and the nut. <clears throat> I'm not going to reuse the nut. Uh, there's a little, one thing I forgot is there's a little rubber washer right here. A little rubber O-ring. Uh, and that helps seal it. Okay. Not going to reuse that. Because it comes new in the kit. So basically, as you saw it before, this piece goes on here like this. And these bolts are in it and your ring and pinion goes there so that's going to be clean this is going to be clean also i want you to notice something if you see this little dot right here there's a one mark right here and a little one mark right there okay so that goes together like that you want to keep these caps they're like main bearing caps on an the engine they got to go with the correct side they were machined for and then if you look at this one, see the two dots here and the two dots there. Okay. Um, they go on there and then them threads line up <clears throat> and these threads line up and this will come apart. But there's that. And then these are the five bolts that held that pinion support on there. I'm not going to reuse the gears. I'm not going to reuse that yoke. Here's your carrier and your ring gear. And it's bearing in races. I'm not going to reuse any of that stuff. So that's an open carrier. And basically an open carrier. Let me explain that to you. So an open carrier, basically, you're, it's going down the road. If this wheel gets traction, this wheel will spin. Okay. It goes to the one least resistance. So there's lots of videos where you can look it up and it'll, it'll explain it more in depth. But basically, these little gears in here will rotate. See them? But basically, that's my stopping point. It's uh, beer 30. The tools I use, 
were a flat screwdriver, a punch to knock the races out. I did have a little center punch, my little center punch right here. A one and a sixteenth socket to get this nut off <clears throat> from the pinion and the yoke. A five eighths for these bolts here. And a nine sixteenths with an extension to get past this little spot right here um, for the pinion support. And I just use my Harbor Freight Earthquake XT half inch drive, battery powered 20 volt <clears throat> impact wrench. And it zips them right off. Okay, so I'm going to drink a couple beers and um, clean this thing up. And then we'll start putting it back together. But if you see, I'm wearing flip-flops or chunklas or whatever you want to call them. And I got a little piece of metal on my foot. It's best to do this in boots and or shoes and, and some pants. But what the hell. Okay. Now that I've got everything cleaned up really good, I'm gonna take these two bearings right here. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take these, in these races, this is the race, this is the bearing that it needs to sit in. And they're not worn yet, so you could probably get them mixed up and be okay, but I don't like doing that. Um, they are the same part number. But what you need to do is at least press one of these bearings this way on the shaft. And I'm going to go do that on the press. And So I'm going to put these in here. Press this on here. This slides in this way once it's all together. Once this races in here. And then I take this bearing and set it in there with this oil slinger ring. Right? And then put the seal on and the crush sleeve and set that up, okay? So that's that's what I'm gonna do next. And then the other thing you wanna do is just to make sure they sent you the right bearings, okay? These are the carrier bearings. So if these are these are the correct ones, because see how they fit nice and snug? They don't flop around and they don't sit like this. They sit down and they sit down nice and even. The races sit down sit down in there completely. And also another way you can do it is you take the cap. See how that fits in there like that? It was a smaller carrier and these were the bigger bearings. They wouldn't fit in there, right? Because these would be too big. If they were too small, then they'd go in and they'd have slop. So this is, and you want to, yes, I've already opened everything up, but you want to make sure that and double check because you don't want to put it all together and go oh wait a minute i got the wrong stuff right so that's what you need to do so and then also with that i'm going to take these two bearings and press them onto this carrier and then also i'm going to take this bearing for the pinion right and press it into here and put this lock ring behind it Okay, so I'm going to do that also, and we'll get back to you. Like I said, I'm not going to completely do this video. I'm going to explain a little bit more what I'm going to do. That way I can cut it short. But if for some reason you're unsure that you want to do this and you need a new set of gears, if you can pull the axles out to get the carrier out, or if you want to just drive yours until it's done, until you get the new stuff, <clears throat> there's a place called quick performance and they make some really good stuff and they do really good gears so if you're not sure and you're like hey i got i got a, I got a nine inch or i, I want a stock carrier or i want an aftermarket carrier i don't want to go through setting these gears up i don't know how it's been my first time i don't want to break nothing i don't want to tear nothing up the one that comes through my my brain the the fastest is quick performance because I've dealt with them and they're pretty good. Go on their website. They'll get the parts together, put it together, set the gears up and everything, make sure everything's right where all you got to do is slide the axles out a couple inches, undo the bolts, pop under your drive shaft, pop that carrier out, pop that new one in and slide it in. But there's certain things they need to know, how many spline axles and stuff like that. 
Okay, so there it is, the complete assembly. I got, <clears throat> I put Loctite on these bolts here. I got this all torqued down. I got the pattern I want, uh, the backlash I want. I got the good, the yoke I want on it. So we're gonna put this in the rear diff. What I'm gonna do before I put this rear diff in is I'm gonna clean all this. And right now I'm getting the majority of it up. Because what happens to these carriers, and you can see on this one, somebody's hit it a couple times, but it doesn't leak. <clears throat> if you look at this axle housing and this tubing right here is all one piece. Yes, it's welded together. What you'll see on a lot of Dana differentials is, and they don't drop out like that. So you can set them on the bench or I hate doing them on the floor. It's just easier and cleaner to keep it up off the floor. Well, anyway, so what happens is you can drop this out. Somebody can build it or you can buy another one. When you do a Dana or the Ford 8.8, .8, you know, Dana 30, 35, 60, 44, whatever, you have to either take the complete housing out and give it to somebody or you got to take the vehicle and they got to do it in there. And then what happens is you'll see it's cast iron and they have the tubes that come in. Well, when you start making a lot of power, um, the tubes can rotate. There's ways to fix it. Don't get me wrong, they're good rear ends, like welding the tubes, because what happens is when you're going to give it gas, this rear end wants to go up, your traction device or your springs, yes, the springs will wrap. And then what happens is, is it spins the tubes. So the four nine inch, you can basically just bolt in and it's ready to go. I mean, there's, there's a lot of upgrades. There's a lot of aftermarket. And once, People start using it a lot. There becomes a lot of aftermarket stuff for it. But right now I'm gonna clean this housing. Okay, just get all the dirt and shit out of it. And and all the old oil and but I'll clean it and we'll come back and I'll show you putting it together. So one of the reasons why I assumed it was original is see this little copper washer right here. And there's the ones that came off when I took the differential off. These little copper washers, but from my understanding, what I've been taught is what would happen is Ford would put the differential in, put a gasket maker or some type of gasket on it, and put this copper washer over the top of the differential once it was set in there and then crank it down and that would seal it, right? And if you look at some of these, you can still see that little piece of copper right there that's where it's crimped on there and I had to break it to get it off. So you want to remove all that, okay? And I'll get that, that's why that tube, you can put a gasket on it, but that's why that motive gear kit that I showed you earlier comes with silicone, okay? And then you actually see some of it here, it looks like there's a little bit of silicone here. There's a piece of the copper washer that just came off. See if I can pull this one off. But you gotta clean all this off. If you don't, it'll booger up the threads and it won't sit right and it won't, you know, you won't get it to seal right or you may, but you know, you won't get a good torque on the threads. So it's a pain in the butt. See, there's that copper. Alright, so I gotta clean all this off. Alright, so it's got silicone on it. It's got a little skin on it. When I mean little skins, you put it on there, you let it cure a little bit. There's a diff we're gonna put in. And uh, I usually don't talk shit, but, <clears throat> cause it all goes wrong when I do. But here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show y'all how we do this, the way I grew up. And when I was young, let me see if I still got it. I used to do transmissions this way too. All right. Yes, in my little shorts and flip flops. I don't care. Try not to hit the silicone. Uh, Fix your rear diff up like this. Uh, uh, uh. It's gonna fight me for a second, but I'll get it. God damn. It's 
See, I told you if I talk shit, it would fight me. I gotta make sure I didn't tear up the silicone. Cause I damn sure I'm not leaking. All right, it's good. All right, so. We all see them old country boys or bear belly on them and got a little muscle on them. That's how they get like that. <clears throat> they use it. It's there for a reason. He puts that thing to work. And since I ran the silicone all the way around the edge of the bolts, or on the outside, I don't need to do them this way. And I didn't want to put too much silicone on it. Some people put it inside and both sides right here, but I didn't want to do all that. I don't want too much. I don't want to dump it in the carrier. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run these down and I'm gonna torque them. Differential's all torqued. Okay. But I want to show you something. Remember we were talking about the drive shaft length earlier? So here's my drive shaft. <clears throat> that other yoke stuck out another inch, right? So it would have put the drive shaft right here. When your rear differential goes up, right? See how it gets closer to the drive shaft as it goes, that yoke as it goes farther down? When your rear differential, when you put weight in the vehicle your rear end goes up well this can't move anymore back that way the differential goes up right so if i'm here and it goes up it's going to go up like this if i got a rear diff like this and it it goes up what's going to happen is because this is at an angle from here to here is shorter than here to here so if you look this is lined up perfectly if i shove that in look if this was to come straight down it would hit that but see how it, as it comes out it kind of comes out so you got to have that inch of play if not when this rear differential goes up and if it's right on if it's stuck in there like that and this is sticking out an inch farther as this goes up it's going to shove it into the back of that transmission and there goes that drive shaft and it'll call it, or transmission and it'll cause it to bind so you don't want that <clears throat> so that's why i had to use this yoke or order another drive shaft and i just bought this drive shaft from prim racing so i'm going to put the u bolts on and tighten them all down and but i wanted to show you that before i put this part together all right so it's important there's a reason why there's measurements and stuff look it up i'm sure you can find a video youtube on that too and it goes real in depth of you know why you got to have three quarters or half or one inch of play in your drive shaft and when you call the drive shaft manufacturer they'll tell you what is it yoke to yoke and you ask them how much and they'll tell you three quarters of an inch half an inch inch something like that as an example so all right it's it it means a lot that little one it that little bit means a lot as you can see right there the drive shaft's bolted in then now we're going to come and put the axles in <clears throat> when they talk about large and small bearings on a ford nine inch they when they talk about the bolt pattern from these bolts okay and depending on what bolts pattern they are there's a large or small or earlier big or earlier small or late big or small they're talking about the size of the bearing and instead of pulling all this out you can just pull the brake drum off or disc if you have it and get that measurement from these bolts here and that'll tell you what size bearing it is whether it's a large or small but this is the bearing race since we got it out we're going to look at it it looks pretty good the bearing's not real loose Okay, you'll hear a lot of humming. Um, <clears throat> if they are, unless you got mud tires, it'll hum either way. One of the th other things to look at is if you look at this mat, this uh, cylinder here, this brake cylinder, see how it looks kind of wet? 
like a little darker discoloration that means this thing has been leaking a little bit um and that is going to make your brakes softer okay that'll make your brakes you go to stop and it's losing pressure here so this probably needs to be rebuilt or replaced real soon i should do it now but what i'm going to do is i'm going to upgrade to the disc brakes on this thing another thing you can look at is how far is this thing pushed out right so if and something i just noticed if i take this brake shoe this is a self adjuster okay real quick on brakes this is your self adjusting cable these two hold the brake shoes on this is emergency brake cable this is the cylinder and these are two of the springs and these are the brake shoes pads are for a disc this is shoes but if you look see how this has got a plunger sticking out and this one doesn't that tells me something that's a problem something happened to that plunger and that's probably why this came out too far and it's leaking so what i need to do is i need to pull this and there's a special tool unless you got strong thumbs from doing this for a while that's missing right there that's not right so when i'm pushing on the brake this is probably just pushing out here and then this is going out too far to stop it so that's an issue back to the axle so when you're looking at a four nine inch axle you want to make sure these are clean okay and the beauty of a four nine inch is if you look out here your bearings out here right and this plate because this is pressed on with this bearing this plate hold your axle in okay so if you have a lot of power get some dog hair on this if you're making a lot of power and you twist this axle here or here or anywhere along here and break this axle this plate is still as long as you don't break it here this plate is still going to hold that axle and now it's going to turn up and your wheels going to hit cockeyed and everything but this axle your wheels is not shouldn't just fall off okay it's going to hold that axle and the wheel ain't going to slide out so with a dana whatever or a, a dana 30 or 35 like in a jeeps or uh other chrysler rear ends but dana whatever or even um, 8.8s. What happened is you got a little piece on the axle and it's basically an extension piece that sits out about this far and it's got a ring on it and it's got like a little piece of a shaft in here. And it's all one, it's part of the axle. It's basically like this, but a groove cut in it. And what happens is you get this thing, it's a C-clip and it slides in there. You slide your axle in, you push it in a little pass, you slide that piece in there and the axle pulls back out and that c-clip holds your axle in well if you break your axle right here or anywhere along this that axle can slide out as you're going down the road and when i was young i had a friend who had like 38s back when you know it was 40s or 44s was a big deal like you that was the biggest tire you could run you know and he had a bearing go out and he knew it and he had a big block in a, in a truck and a Bronco and he was beating the hell out of it mudding and he just kept going and kept going and he, it wallowed his bearing right here so bad that this piece got worn and it actually got the axle hot and it slid this pressed on piece here. It, it came loose or chewed it up so bad that the axle slid out of his truck. Okay, so if you break it like up here, what's going to happen is this axle is not going to be supported here and it's going to drop down. Well, that's going to cant that wheel. So you'll know. And then you won't have any drive on that rear tire. I pulled these axles out and some of the fluid came out. So it looks like it's leaking, but it's not. But that doesn't mean when you disturb a seal that it eventually won't leak. So what you want to do is... When you go to put it back in is to see this little part right here it's got this little dimple in it almost basically that's like a drain tube so you want that to go down and that way if it does leak past the seal it'll come out that plate and drip down okay and not get too much on the back of the actual flange or sling it all over your brakes it'll look like that so here we go we're going to put it in okay 
and we got it because it's, it's a little higher right we got to line it up with that carrier turn it a little bit line them bolts up make sure she goes in all the way right and these bolts are going to try to pop out the back and all that other crap but uh, it's going to fight you a little that seal's got to get pressed back in there so uh, but it'll slide in and out it'll slide in it freaking better there we go see that and then you put the nuts on it sometimes I do things the hard way and these little studs back here that hold this plate in are removable let me show you that's what they look like okay sits on the back side of the plate the axle flange for the housing the backing plate and then that plate goes on and that basically when you tighten it down it cinches it all together okay so if you see something looks like a tea laying on the ground this is goes to the back of this more than likely and i don't like putting things on with an impact right away so what i do is i get them hand tight so here we go to the other side so if you notice what i was showing you on the other side see how it's got this other plunger here it's got that one there it's missing on the other side this one's not doesn't really look that wet shoes are pretty good shape all right so another thing is depending on where your rear differential sits these axles could be different lengths so you don't want to mix them up <clears throat> okay some people say well all different lengths or none of them are well, when you have a rear end done, a rear differential done, if you have your yoke in the center, that makes the driver, the passenger side axle shorter if it's centered. If you have your ring gear and your yoke off center, more to the passenger side, that would put the center of your carrier in the center of the truck. And then your axles be the same length, but I just don't mix them up. You know, if you've ever ordered a set of aftermarket axles for a race car or something like I have, you'll, uh, you'll notice a difference. Probably not good to scrape it like that, but, you know, whatever. I've done worse shit. But seal's in good shape. We're going to slide this one in, all right? This one, I would say it doesn't seem like it's fighting me as bad, but as soon as I say that shit, it'll start fighting me. All right. All right, here we go. All right. Put these on. Get them all. First couple of threads started. I'm going to put a disc brake conversion on this. I probably should have done it now, but, you know, one thing at a time. So... Here we go. If you notice I'm reaching my hand behind it to hold those little bolts in, right? I'm not putting a wrench on it, I'm just holding that teeth flat. So this thing can do its job. Ooh, what is that? Oh, that looks like it's slipping. It's letting it slip a little bit, huh? But if I do this, that bitch is, that some bitch will sink in quick. Wow, that thing ain't messing around. I might like this. I'm gonna test this thing out. I haven't used this brand yet. This, uh, Speedmaster. But, Look, as I do this, it starts to slip. Wow. Actually feels like it wants to work properly. All right, so there's that drum. And I'll go over brakes on a different, drum brakes on a different time. I'm sure you don't need me to show you how to put a freaking tire on. If you do, you shouldn't be messing with this much of the rear end. If you'll know how to take a tire off and change a tire, you'll need to be messing with no axles and gears and brakes. All right. So, Bronco's almost ready. OK, 
Okay, so I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see this on camera, but see this little piece right here? There was, oh, it was missing over here. I'm lucky this, this brake cylinder didn't come apart, but the cup was all the way out and it was kind of being holed in by this. So that's what you should have. It was missing this piece right here. So I had to take it all apart. It kind of fought with me a little bit, but there it is. I'm gonna put the drum back on it. Okay. And uh, the self adjuster will tighten it up a little. This is just a container I have from a while back, and uh, basically it takes two and a half quarts, and this is kind of how I measure it out, but I'll take my gear oil and pour it in here. And so the next thing we gotta do is put the tires on it and put gear oil in the diff, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna fill this full of gear oil. Some recommend 80, 90, some recommend a 140. So depends on what your recommends, that's what you're gonna put in it, but uh basically this is how i measure my quartz because I, I get this by like the gallons or whatever or the five gallon buckets so i got a couple of five gallon buckets left from my my actual shop when i had a shop before i moved to my garage trimmed everything down but anyway so we're gonna fill this up two and a half, two three times and put it in there until it comes out so i take this little plug right here out Try not to drop it. And basically you're gonna put this in and fill this up until it comes out of that plug. Okay, so. So what I've done here is that, oh, got me a little hose, a little piece of hose and stuck it on there. And usually it sticks on there pretty good until I try to turn it so you can see it with a camera. But, okay, that's almost that full quartz gone. And you want to try to keep it from running out, but because that's when it's full. So if you spill it and it falls out, how do you know it's it's running? It's not running out already. But um, we'll know here in a second. But it, they say it takes about two and a half quarts. So two should be fine once I get to my third one. Then we'll. And then what happens is when that ring gear is in there turning, you driving down the road. It sloshes it, right? It sloshes everywhere. It sloshes to keep this seal wet and the bearing up here. And as the ring gear starts uh, spinning it, and that's and it, you know, starts sloshing it and everything, and then it it, it bleeds out into the axles and keeps the bearings going too. So another way you can tell is get your finger in there. I'll put another cord in there. I don't care. As soon as I do, that's what'll happen. As soon as I fill this some bitch up and go to get it going in there it'll say oh no i was full but this 80 90 this gear oil don't smell pretty it's and then it's hard to get the smell off of you but you know me i like gear oil and race gas and nitrous and all that good smelling shit race gas just turns me on nitro joe's baby i can't believe this thing takes four quarts there it goes it's coming now that somebody just took four quarts. Oh, there it is. But it's full now. Kind of clean my hands up a little for now. It's still gonna stink for a little bit, but old lady don't give a shit. She'll admit, she'll say something about it, but just snug it up, make sure it don't come out and leak. Alright, so that's that's pretty much it. Like I said, I know I didn't show how to take it off, but basically drive shaft off, tire, tires off, hubs off, drive shaft, pull the four bolts of the axles, or you can do the axles first, but you gotta pull the axles out before the carrier comes out. Obviously you gotta take the drive shaft off for the carrier. When you put the carrier in, you can do the drive shaft last if you want, when you come in to fill it up. You put the axles in, and the drums on, and the tire, you could do the tires if you wanted, but. That's how you do it. All right. We're going to see what happens. It's, you know, some people say, oh, you don't feel a difference in a 411 gear. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. The thing is, this little hose right here needs to be hooked back up. If you can see it or not. This hose right here, this little fitting is your breather vent. You know, because everything's sealed and this thing gets warm. Well, the air's got to go somewhere. You know, but what you don't want to do is 
allow water to get in here because this hose is old and brittle and it won't it, it breaks when you see the crack in it right there so i need to put a new piece of hose on it and and you want the end of the hose to be up here because you don't want to be going through a mud hole and water get in there and then there's your bearings up and everything so i need to put a new piece of hose on this because see how it just splits so we'll fix that that's important too but that's four nine inch all right there she is it got tires on it so i ain't gonna beat the hell out of it yet so the recommendation is what you need to do actually by the instructions you need to run it for about 15 minutes at a time before you really get down on it basically get a couple heat cycles in it get them broke in real good get the gears and the and the you know meshing in real good before you really start getting on it but then we can beat the hell out of it. Hell yeah.